right, so the topic here is the segment addition postulate, midpoints, and bisectors. And our essential question, <clears throat> the thing that we want to be able to answer by the end of this, is how do you find missing values of segments? We're going to get things started here with a little bit of vocabulary to get us, uh, get us ready for today's problems. Uh, first up, a segment. A segment is a piece of a line created by two endpoints. So that thing might look like this. Remember, segment has those two endpoints, and those endpoints are used to name the thing. Remember, you need to put the line segment symbol above it if you were talking about the actual segment itself. Next up, a midpoint. A midpoint is a point that cuts a segment into two equal pieces. So if I take that same segment from before, AB, and I plop a point down in the middle, call it M, it's going to cut it into two equal pieces, and we mark those equal pieces by putting the little uh, tick marks on there. And in this case, my midpoint was named M. A little color coding here, my midpoint is M. Um, now, anytime that you cut something in half, that is called, the thing that cuts it in half is called a bisector. So a bisector is a geometric object, it might be a point, might be a line, that cuts something into two equal pieces. So let's do, let's call this segment EF here. Um, and if I take EF and I draw a line, it's going through the middle there, and it cuts it into two equal pieces, so it has the little tick marks there, then that line let me call it L, is a bisector. Um, remember, you can name a line with that cursive letter. So we've got a segment. Segments can be split in half. The point in the middle is a midpoint. And if something splits it in half, it's called bisecting it. And that object is called a bisector. OK, that should be all the new words we need for today. Um, let's take a look at the segment addition postulate. The segment addition postulate says, given two points A and C, the third point, B, lies on that segment, AC, if and only if AB plus BC equals AC. So let's color code that. It's going to make more sense. AB plus BC equals AC. So what we're saying here is that if we take the two parts, the two segments that make up the whole thing, and add them together, it's got to be equal to the whole thing. So like if I put some numbers down here, six and three, six plus three should be equal to nine. So I know it's a lot of words, but that's all we're saying. We're saying that if we take two segments and add them together, that's gotta be equal to the whole segment, as long as those three points are collinear. They're all in the same line. Um, and we can use this to solve things. So let's look at example one and we can see it in action. Example one says uh, point E is between D and F on segment DF. So here's segment DF, E is in between them. If DE is 5X and EF is 10, and DF, this whole thing is 45, find the value of X and the length of DE. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, <clears throat> um, like if you look, if you look at DE right here, it says DE is 5X. This is DE. But notice that when we said DE equals 5X, we didn't put the segment symbol above DE. And that's because if there's no segment symbol above it, it's talking about actually how long it is. It's saying that DE is 5X inches or meters or feet, whatever the unit would be. Um, so DE is 5X, EF is 10, DF is 45. That's this whole thing here. Now let's try that part plus part equals whole thing. We're adding the two parts together, we're setting it equal to the whole thing. So if I do this algebraically, 5x plus 10 must be equal to 45. So part plus part equals whole. And now I've got an algebraic equation that represents my geometric situation. And now we just have to do the algebra, right? Let's subtract the 10, subtract the 10 from both sides. 
that will leave me with 5x is equal to 35. 45 minus 10 is 35. And then I'll just uh, divide by 5. Divide both sides by 5, I get x is equal to 7. And if x is 7, let's plug that back in to DE. Because that's the second part of this problem, right? Find the length of DE. So now DE should be, it was 5x, now it's 5x, but x is 7. 5 times 7 gives me 35. Okay, and now let's just double check, make sure that works. If DE is 35, then does part plus part equal whole? Does 35 plus 10 equal 45? It does. So check, we got that thing right, right? We always wanna check our work. Okay, example one done. Let's go to uh, the inside here. So if you open up that little book, you should be looking at example two. Now, example two, my, oh, my, look at this thing. We don't have part and part. We have part, part, and part equal whole. The segment addition postulate isn't just limited to two segments. We, we could have three. We could have four. Who knows? In this case, we got three little segments making up a whole one. So let's try setting this up the same way, right? Part plus part plus part equals whole. Okay, so now we've got an algebraic equation to represent our geometric situation. And uh, let's drop this line down and see what happens. First thing I gotta do is distribute. Two times x is two x, two times five is 10. Don't forget that two x we already had. <clears throat> I've got a lot of like terms here. Let me combine those. Uh, an x, a 2x, and a 2x, that'd be 5x's. Plus that 10 that's still there equals 60. So all my x's turned into that. Uh, subtract the 10. Get 5x is equal to 50. Divide, and I get that x is 10. All right, now the second part of this wanted me to find CD, so let me take this x equals 10, plug it back in up there. So CD would now be 2 times x, 2 times 10, CD is 20. All right, so I always want to double check my work, so let me check how this works. That's 20, this would be 10. Um, and then BC, let's do a little mental math. Uh, if X is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, times 2 is 30. So does that work? Does 10 plus 30 plus 20, does the part plus the part plus the part equal the whole? Uh, I do believe it does. So we are set. X was 10, CD was 20. All right, so that's the segment addition postulate. Add up those parts, set it equal to the whole thing. Um, next up, we got the midpoint of a segment theorem. Now, this one's pretty easy. Uh, a midpoint, like we said before, is a point on a line segment that splits the segment into two congruent segments. Now, this word right here, um, we didn't see that before, but it's important to understand the difference here. Congruent is this symbol. You may have seen it before, you may have not. It is an equal sign with a little squiggle above it. And that's the symbol that we use to represent geometric objects that have the same measure. We can say, like we can't say that a segment is equal to another segment because a segment is a geometric object. Now a segment's length might be equal to another segment's length. We've seen that before. In fact, we see that right here, right? A midpoint splits something into two equal parts. AB, the length of AB, is equal to the length of BC. But if we're talking about the actual segments themselves, we would say that segment AB is congruent to segment BC because they have the same length. But if we're talking about the actual length itself, like how many inches long it is, 
we use the equal sign. So we use the congruent symbol for geometric objects. We use the equal sign when we're talking about numbers, right? We're talking about how many inches something is, how many degrees something is, that kind of stuff. So very similar, but uh, there's a distinct difference. Now, all we're saying when we're talking about something being a midpoint is if we want to set up an equation, we just set those two parts equal to each other, right? Because they got to be the same length. So let's see that in action down here on example three. It says point T is the midpoint of SR, so those segments must be congruent, their lengths must be equal. And it says ST is three parentheses two X plus four, and TR is 30. So we will do part equals part. We will set those two lengths equal to each other. Okay, so we got an algebraic situation or an algebraic equation to represent our geometric situation and let's, uh, let's get going here, let's distribute. Um, three times two X is, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to color code myself. I always like to color code. Okay, so distribu distribution. Three times two X is six X, three times four is 12 equals 30. If I subtract the 12, I will get 6x equals 18. Divide by 6 and get that x is 3. All right. Now, if x is 3, how do I find sr? Well, it's kind of two ways. Let's plug this back in. If we plug it back into st then st now is 3 parentheses 2 times 3 plus 4. Okay, so that's 3 parentheses 6 plus 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. So st is 30. Now, SR is the whole thing, right? So that should be 30 and 30, which gives me 60. Now, some of you guys probably saw that immediately, right? If TR is 30 and TR is half of the thing, then the whole thing's got to be 60. But good to plug things back in geometrically to make sure that they work, right? Um, 30 plus 30 does equal 60, so boom. I'm going to give myself a check on that one. That checks out for me. So there's no adding on this one, right? We're not doing part plus part equals whole because we don't even know what the whole thing is, right, at the beginning. Instead, we know that the two parts have to be equal to each other, so that's the way that we go about setting up our equation. Okay, um, let me hop up to the top of the other side. Let's see what we got here. Um, no picture. We're going to have to draw our own picture on this one. That's okay. Uh, what's it talking about? Point N is the midpoint of MO. So let me draw a little picture. Um, let me give myself MO, N is the midpoint. So I know those two parts got to be the same. MN is 7X plus 20. NO is 12X minus 5. Find the value of X and MO. Okay, well, what I know is that part must be equal to part. Right, that's going to be how I'm setting up this equation. 7x plus 20 must be equal to 12x minus 5. Part equals part. Okay, so let's solve this thing. Um, if I subtract the 7x, I'll get 20 is equal to 5x minus 5. Add 5. Get 25 is equal to 5x, divide by 5, get x equals 5. Okay, so that looks cool. Um, let me plug that back in, because I need to find MO. So I'm going to actually plug that into two spots. Going to plug it in there, going to plug it in there. So if I plug it into MN, let's, let's practice our mental math here. Um, 7x plus 20. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 plus 20 is 55. And then on the other side, um, if I plug it in, 
12x minus 5. 12 times 5 is 60. 60 minus 5 is 55. Um, so the, the two parts equaled each other, right? So I'm going to give myself a check mark because that, that checks out with what it should be. And then if I want MO, that's got to be 55 plus 55. So MO must be 110. Okay, we're cruising. So midpoints part equals part. Let's check out example five. Uh, I believe this is where it gets a little weird. Um, point B is the midpoint of AC. No picture, so I'm going to draw a picture. Here's AC. B is the midpoint. Two tick marks because they're divided into two equal parts. AB is 4x minus 4. AC, ooh, this is weird. AC is the whole thing, is 7x minus 2. Find the value of x and BC. So we're in a little bit of a bind here because normally we would want to do part equals part, but we don't know the other part. We don't have an expression that represents BC. Instead, our other expression is the whole thing. Well, what do we know about the two parts? The, the two parts have to be the same, right? So even though we don't have anything over there, we could go ahead and put another 4x minus 4 because they have to be the same. Now, setting the two parts equal to each other, while true, won't lead us anywhere because if I do 4x minus 4 equals 4x minus 4, it's all going to cancel out. I'm not going to get anything. So instead, I can kind of treat this a little bit like a segment addition postulate one. I could do a little part plus part equals whole. Or a better way of writing it might just be two times the part, because there's two of them, equals the whole. This is the way that I like to think about it. Two times half equals the whole, because it's going to take two of the yellows to equal a blue. So that's the way that I'm going to write it. Now I've got an algebraic equation to represent my geometric situation. So let's distribute. That'll give me 8x minus 8 equals 7x minus 2. Um, subtract the 7x. I'm left with just 1x minus 2 equals negative 2. Add the 8. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So x equals 6. Now let's check that out. Let me take this, go plug it back in up here. Um, let's do practice our mental math. Uh, 4x minus 4. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 4 is 20. So both those pieces have to be 20. And then 7x minus 2 7 times 6 is 42, minus 2 is 40. Uh, 20 and 20 do make 40, so I'm going to give myself a check mark. And that means that BC, the other half, has to be 20. Okay, we're cruising right along. So that one was kind of an odd one. That one's kind of a combination of the two types of problems that we've seen so far. We had to do a little bit of midpoint knowledge. We had to do a little bit of segment addition postulate knowledge. All right, so last up, segment bisector theorem. This is very similar to what we just, just saw before. This is just using a different terminology. Remember, a bisector is a line, array, a segment. It's something that uh, divides a line segment into two equal parts. Um, so in this case, our bisector, oops, didn't want that. Uh, our bisector itself and our picture is this line, right? And it's going to divide it into two equal parts, right? You get to put the little tick marks on there. So we're just going to do part equals part again. So just the same thing as the midpoint formula or the, the midpoint uh, type problems. It's just that Right, they're, they're using a different terminology. We just gotta know what a bisector does. 
So what's example six got for us? It says line M bisects AC at point B. So we've got a segment. There's segment AC. We got line M. Remember the lowercase kind of italicized or cursive letters mean the line. And they're saying that that line's bisecting it. So it's splitting it in half. And it's splitting it in half right at point B. So B's in the middle there. B is the midpoint. And it says uh, AB is 2 times 7x plus 5. 2 times 7x plus 5. And BC is 10. Now, what do we know about those two pieces, this piece and this piece? Well, we know that if it got bisected, it got split into two equal parts. So that's kind of how I'm going to set up my equation here. I'm doing a little part equals part. Because it got bisected, it got split into two equal parts. Got my algebraic equation to represent my geometric situation. And away we go. Let's solve this thing. 2 times 7x is 14x plus 10 equals 10. Um, this is kind of odd. Let's subtract the 10. I get 14x equals 0. Weird, but that's okay. Divide both sides by 14. Uh, 0 divided by anything is just 0, so x is 0. Weird, but not against the rules. Let's check to make sure this works. Let's take this thing, plug it back in. If I plug that back in, 7 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. Uh, so check. 10 equals 10. The part equals the part. It was bisected. Um, x is 0. Okay, so we have seen a wide variety of problems here. Uh, second addition postulate, part of this whole. We saw some midpoints, we saw some bisectors. It is now officially your time to try some problems. Uh, so you've got your, your turn here. You got six problems on this thing. Um, go ahead, pause the video here, give those a shot, and come back when you're ready to see how you did. All right, so number one. That was a midpoint. You should have done 2x plus 4 equals 10. If you subtract the 4, you get 2x equals 6. You divide, and x should have been 3. Uh, we got a bisector over here on number 2. Bisector split things in half, so your equation should have been part equals part. Subtract the 3, you get 7x equals 21. That should have given you x was also 3. Second addition postulate, you should have done part plus part equals whole. Combine those like terms, you get 4x plus 13 equals 6x minus 3. If you subtract the 4x, you get a 2x over here. Add the 3 over, you get a 16. You divide and you get an x equals 8. Uh, number four is a midpoint, but it does want AC, so hopefully you plug back in on this one. Your equation should have been 6 parentheses 5x minus 5 equals 10x plus 10. If you distributed 30x minus 30 equals 10x plus 10. Subtract the 10x, you get 20x minus 30 is equal to 10. That's going to be 20x is equal to 40, so x is 2. And then if we want AC, let's plug that thing back in. Um, if I plug it back into the BC side, 10 times 2 is 20, plus 10 is 30. Over here, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So 30 and 30 means that AC, the whole thing, should have been 60. All right, number five wants us to find AC also. This was a segment addition postulate. Let's do a little part plus part equals whole. That's 2x plus 18 is equal to 3x plus 7. Subtract the 2x. Um, we get 18 is equal to x plus 7. Subtract the 7, and I get 11 is equal to x. But, psych, that's not my answer. Let's plug that thing back in and see what's going on. We want AC. I'm just going to plug it into everything just to make sure this works. Um, 
this becomes 15, this becomes 25, and the top part, 3 times 11 is 33, plus 7 is 40. Uh, 15 plus 25 does equal 40, so check to my answer, AC is 40. And this last one wants us to solve for AC if B is a midpoint. This was one of the ones where they gave us the half in the whole. So my equation 2 times 4x plus 2 equals 10x plus 2. 8x plus 4 is equal to 10x plus 2. Subtract the 8x, get 2x plus 2. Subtract the 2, and I get 2 is equal to 2x. So x is 1. Let's plug that back in for AC. Um, if x is 1, 10 times 1 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And just to double check, uh, for AB, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. 6 and 6 do make 12. So confirmation that AC is, in fact, 12. All right, hopefully you guys did good, and uh, I'll see you later.